Your lease is an agreement between a leaseholder, which is you, and a freeholder, which in this case is the council. The lease will describe the term or length of the agreement, what you can and can't do, and the council's responsibility. Most leases have a term of under 125 years. Whatever the length, that is the fixed period of the lease, but it is possible to extend. The lease sets out who is responsible for looking after different parts of the building, who is responsible for insuring it, the ground rent and details of the service charge. Most aspects of the property's management should be covered in the lease. In the event of any dispute, always look at the terms of the lease first. This video will describe the most common type of lease used by the council, but you might find that the numbering or layout of your lease is a bit different. The front page of the lease will give the property's address and the names of the original parties to the lease. As the leaseholder, you'll be referred to as the tenant. The front page will be followed by a number of numbered paragraphs that define all the terms used in the lease. For example, it defines what is meant by the flat when the lease refers to it. From paragraph 2.5, the lease will state which parts of the property are the responsibility of the leaseholder and which are the responsibility of the council. For example, window glass, ceilings and fixtures and fittings. There will also be a clause stating what the flat does not include. Page 4 and 5 of the lease onwards include covenants by the leaseholder and freeholder. A covenant is an agreement either to do or not to do a particular act. Each covenant is numbered. They are important because anyone not following them is breaching the terms of the lease. The first paragraph of this section, which begins with the phrase witnesseth as follows, is the council's agreement to lease the flat to the leaseholder for a fixed period or term and ground rent, subject to the covenants that follow. Covenants 2.1 to 2.10, beginning the tenant hereby covenants with the council as follows, are covenants by the leaseholder to pay the ground rent, a service charge and other costs and to keep the flat in good condition. The repair covenant should include a list of things in the flat the leaseholder is responsible for repairing, such as fixtures and fittings and kitchens and bathrooms. Covenants 2.10 onwards are the other things the leaseholder either has to do, such as allow the council access on reasonable notice, or not to do, such as cause a nuisance to neighbours. Covenants 3.1 onwards, beginning the council hereby covenants with the tenant as follows, are covenants by the council, such as to keep the structure of the building in good repair and to keep it insured. The next part of the lease is divided up into six different schedules. Each schedule lists the terms of a different aspect of the lease. The first schedule describes the property, the building and the estate on which the property is located. The second schedule lists all the rights included with the lease of the property. For example, the right to use the communal entrance of the building and the staircases and the right to receive water from communal water pipes. The third schedule lists any rights that are excluded from the lease such as the council's right to enter the flat to carry out repairs to communal facilities. The fourth schedule lists all the council's expenses that can be included in the service charge. These can be actual or estimated expenses. It's divided into two parts. Part one lists the expenses for the building and part two lists the expenses for the estate. Paragraph eight of part one and paragraph one of part two allow the council to add a management fee for these services. The fifth schedule lists the terms of the service charge. Paragraph 1 of the fifth schedule obliges the council to calculate the amount of service charge payable as soon as is practicable after the end of each financial year and to ensure that the service charge is certified. Paragraph 2 requires the council to supply a copy of the certificate to the leaseholder upon request and without charge. Paragraph 3 states that the council certificate must include a summary of the expenses incurred during the financial year. Paragraph 4 provides a detailed breakdown of how the costs invoiced to the leaseholder are calculated. Paragraph 5 allows the council to send out estimated invoices for the years in question in advance. Paragraph 6 obliges the council to send out a final account of the actual service charges for the year in question. The actual costs will be calculated after the financial year has concluded. The sixth schedule this general restrictions and regulations imposed by the council. This includes not keeping rubbish in the communal areas and keeping any domestic pets under proper control. Finally, the lease will include a signature by the original leaseholder. It may also have an attached plan which shows the layout of the property and a map showing where it is located within the building and estate. 